Hello, what's up? The last few years, I've been very, very much into the books of Friedrich Nietzsche, and that has been one of the best and also the hardest things I've ever done. Because Nietzsche had a massive natural ability to understand the human nature, and also a massive talent to express himself through language that sometimes can be a bit hard for us normal human beings. And by natural disposition to understand the human nature, I mean a touch to dig deep into your own soul and bring out that mass of feelings and impulses and put them in a somewhat understandable order. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but after the example, I think it will be better understood. Take a look at this quote written by Nietzsche. The lust of property and love. What different associations each of these ideas evoke, and yet it might be the same impulse twice named. This quote really hit me hard because one thing is a fact. Nature is a singularity. When you look at energy and mass, it seems to our eyes as very different things. But when you look at their core, they are actually the same. That mass and energy are food are quite different manifestations of the same thing. A somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average mind. And this singularity can also be said about waves. Everything you are watching in this video is a wave. The light is a wave, colors are waves, and the sound you're listening to is a wave. So that there's this tremendous mess of waves all over in space. That happens because we have this stubborn tendency to differentiate stuff that are not really different. But our five senses tend to make us believe that way. So when we say we're feeling anger, sadness, happiness, love or hate, some of them may be just the same impulse that we name differently when they come out of us. So I believe this is what Nietzsche meant when he said that lust for property and love are the same impulse that we just named twice. Because just like mass and energy are different manifestations of the same thing, love and lust of property also have the same core, and yet it might be the same impulse twice named, on the one occasion disparate from the standpoint of those already possessing, in whom the impulse has attained something of repose, who are now apprehensive for the safety of their possession, on the other occasion viewed from the standpoint of the unsatisfied and thirsty, and therefore glorified as good. When you have the desire for a new property, let's say a new car for example, before you buy it there is a glorification of the desired object, and dissatisfaction with the the fact that you don't have it, and you search about the engine, the wheels, the leather seat, and watch dozens of YouTube videos about it, and it brings this feeling of hunger to acquire it, even though it's a far dream. Which is similar to when you are liking someone, you glorify that person and think that of the 7 billions of human beings in this world, he or she is the one. And this feeling also brings an insatisfaction, as you don't see yourself complete without that specific person. You brush your teeth thinking about her, you go to sleep thinking about her, you plan all the the things you're gonna do with her. So, the desire for her, it's the same for it, and while you are not able to obtain what you want, the car or the girl, you glorify this feeling because you don't have what you desire, just like a hungry person views food with way more desire than a satisfied person. Scarcity creates a higher necessity, viewed from the standpoint of the unsatisfied and thirsty, and therefore glorified as good. But sometimes you manage to get what you want in life. At this moment, the impulse has attained something of repose, and now that you have it, you get apprehensive for the safety of your possession. The best example I can think of is Andrew Tate, because Andrew Tate did not take over the internet by accident, he's underlined by some big psychological forces. Andrew got to this level of relevance because he speaks what he feels, without the filters that society demands. This brings a lot of trouble to him, but also brings the support of a lot of young men around the world, who are repressing those Poses and see him as escape valve to have their voice heard. So pay attention to the Tate brothers' opinion on their relationships and their sports cars. If I was to get with a girl and I was to take that kind of girl seriously, all those dudes hanging around you're gonna have to go out of respect for me. Listen, I don't I don't care how good the locks on my Lamborghini are. If I see a bunch of dudes trying to break in, I'm gonna walk out there and say, get the away from my car. That's all it is. It's a territorial thing. If I park one of my 17 supercars <laughs> out, outside, outside a club, right? Let's say the Lambo's outside. Yeah. And dudes are trying to break in. Even though I know the locks, the alarm, the immobilizer are solid, you can't steal a Lambo, right? Mm -hmm. But dudes are trying to break in and I see it. Am I gonna allow them to try? No. No. no, no. So if I have a chick, even though I know she won't let them smash, even though I know she knows what they're about, and even though I know she's loyal to me, out of respect for me, I do not allow my 
girlfriends to have guy friends. I don't allow them to. And they have to choose if they want to be with me or if they want to have, keep their guy friends. And that's a line that I draw. It sounds jocose as the internet is a battlefield for attention, but you can tell they truly mean what they say, as most people do inside. They have this possessive approach towards their cars and girlfriends because both feelings derive from the same impulse and differently from everybody else, they just don't deny these feelings. But I think those millions of views, likes and positive comments reading those videos show that it resonates with a lot of people. Those already possessing, in whom the impulse has attained something of repose, are now apprehensive for the safety of their possession. So the reason why you get so jealous of your girlfriend is the same reason why you get mad when someone is messing with your stuff. You are apprehensive for the safety of your possession as both feelings derive from the same impulse. don't misunderstand me here, your girlfriend or boyfriend is not your property, one is a human being and the other is a soulless object, but what I mean is, what you are feeling in both occasions it's the same, when you truly look at the core of those emotions. I know it sounds horrible, but the difference between a fan and a fanatic is not what they feel, but how they act, and I'm not done yet, as time goes by, those things you were incredibly amazed when you first bought, don't strike the same feeling again, just like 3 months of dating doesn't feel like the same as 20 years of marriage. Our our love of our neighbor, is it not striving after new property? And similarly, our love of knowledge, of truth, and in general, all the striving after novelties? We gradually become satiated with the old and securely possessed, and again, stretch out our hands. Even the finest landscape in which we live for three months is no longer certain of our love, and any kind of more distant coast excites our covetousness. The possession, for the most part, becomes smaller through possessing. So that means that having a loving spouse who you're gonna share your life with, have good experiences together, share nice conversations, share bad situations. To have someone supporting you and striving for a higher common good is an illusion that will never come out of this feeling called love? Well, that is not true, but maybe the best name for that isn't love. There is, of course, here and there, on this terrestrial sphere, a kind of sequel to love in which that covetous longing of two persons for one another has yielded to a new desire and covetousness, to a common higher thirst for a superior ideal standing above them. But who knows this love? Who has experienced it? Its right name is friendship. So your old car may not bring you the same excitement anymore, but this feeling can turn into something more noble, and I think these images describe it better than anything spoken. In the end of the day, just because both feelings are the same, it doesn't mean they're necessarily good or bad, because it lies beyond the good and evil and we are the ones responsible to make something out of them. So, thank you very much for your time and see you soon.